What up, what up? Winbush here, and today I'm excited to show you guys how you can control your particles inside of the sequencer and Unreal Engine. Now to get started, I have a blank scene. I'm just gonna delete this right here, player start. And then um, I'm gonna show you guys the particle collection I'm gonna be using. So if I come to my Epic Games Store, and I scroll down here, this is actually the one I'm gonna be using. It's the Volume 2 Fire and Flame. I'm just gonna click Add to Project. I'm going to find my project that I'm using right there. Click add. And while this is adding to here, this is downloading. I'm just going to click on it so you guys can kind of see the pack and everything. So this comes absolutely free. If you go to the marketplace and just search for this, this is 100% free. These fire flame packs are actually pretty good. Like I've been using them for some projects here. If I scroll through here, you can actually see we have some of the remnants coming off the flames. Like we have smoke and we have sparks and we have that displacement going on and we have lighting and everything. So this is pretty much set up to drag and drop in your scene and it's good to go. But the one problem I was having is like I'm using a sequencer to render everything out. And once I hit render, it automatically started playing it from the top, which I didn't want to have. I wanted to have it start at like frame 60 and then have the fire ignite the flames. And so I found out a way that you can actually control it in the sequencer. So let me make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to come back in my scene here and down here, I'm going to click on my folder that has all my flames and everything in here. I think they're under particles, fire. There we go. So I'm just going to click and drag a random one in here. So I'm using fire five, I'm just going to zero it out, make it direct center for no particular reason, just because then if I click on G on my keyboard, there we go. So I'm getting rid of all the icons and everything. If I zoom in here, this is actually a pretty good fire pack. I would highly recommend it. Like I said, it's free, so why not? So first, I'm going to start up my sequencer by coming up to cinematics. Come down to add level sequence. And I'm just going to leave the naming convention what it is. This is just for a tutorial. I'm just going to click save. And now I have my sequencer timeline here. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to actually drag my fire into my sequencer. And this way I could kind of keyframe when I want to turn it on and off, but it's not going to be in like a keyframe in the fashion that we're thinking of. We have to do it in a particular way to make it start at frame 60. But before we do that, I'm going to click on the camera here to add a camera and the camera cuts. So now I have a camera in my scene. If I look at my world outliner, you see we have a cinema camera in here, which I could pull back a little bit and we should have it. Yeah, there we go. I actually, I'll do a cinematic viewport. Make sure I have my camera selected. There we go. So let's say we want a camera here and we want our sequence to start at like frame 60. So if I come over to frame 60, there's no way down here that I can see that. Like, you know, if I click on my fire, it's like, okay, where do I go to make it start at frame 60? So if I come down to my fire 05, click the track button. Then scroll up here where it says particle toggle track. I'm going to click on this and down here as well. I'll come up with a section here called particle system. And if I click on activate, it's going to give us three different options here. So I'm going to leave this one actually at activate and right here. I have the plus key. I'm going to click on this to add a keyframe. You can see that once I click the keyframe, they added a line here and that shows that it's going to extend for the entirety of my sequence. But if I come over to frame zero, you can see that it's not stopping at all. Like if I click play, it's still going. And so we kind of have to tell Unreal that we want to have a deactivate because if I click play here, yeah, it's working there and it's going to ignite. But when we actually go to render, it's not going to work that way. I've tried it multiple times. You have to tell it to deactivate and then it's going to activate here. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So if I come over to frame zero, Come down to deactivate, make it, there we go. We already have the keyframe there and this is all real time. So it's going to take a second to deactivate. But now since we have this in here, well, whenever we go to render, like if I come up to window cinematic movie render queue, you know, set this all up and everything. Once we go to render in here, then it's not going to be rendering or it's not going to have the flame going at frame zero. And once we click play, it's just going to activate at frame 60. So sometimes the stuff that works here in the viewport doesn't exactly work out the same whenever we go to render. If you guys worked with any particle systems or anything like that, you would know. 
And what I like to do is I kind of like to give myself a little buffer in here. So if I come down here to my lower left hand corner, let's make this maybe like negative 30. And then I'm going to drag this over. Then I'm going to drag my timeline all the way over to negative 30. Actually, I need to grab my camera cuts here, drag this over to negative 30. Then down here, I'm going to have that be my start frame. And I'm going to click and drag my deactivation down here. And that kind of just gives us a buffer because I've noticed sometimes too, when I was doing my rendering, even though at frame zero, I had it deactivated, it would still kick on a couple of frames early. So to get around that, I made sure that I gave myself a buffer. And that way, you know, if I had to flame down or anything like that, whenever it's rendering, it gave us that little safe buffer of 30 frames in there. So if I click play, there we go. Nothing's going and then it's going to ignite. And whenever we go to render it out, it should play fine. Actually, let me render it for you guys so you can see. So if I come over here under my movie render queue, I'm just going to click on my level sequencer and I'm going to set this up. JPEG should be fine. My output, I'm going to actually make a new folder for it. So I'm just going to make a folder called render select. And then for file name format, let's just name this fire. I can leave this at 1080. We should be fine there. Everything else should be good. Click accept. Then I'm just going to click render. And there you go. So you saw that on the first frame, it actually ignited a flame there for a second, and then it kind of dissipated out. And so that's why I wanted to give myself that buffer, because if we would have had it on frame zero, that flame would have ignited on frame zero, and then we would have been screwed. So let me open up After Effects. And then I'm going to bring in my sequence in here just so we could kind of play it out. So now I have After Effects open. You can see right here, I have my sequence brought in. I just made a quick composition for it. So if we go through this, you can see on the very beginning, we actually have some of the flame there. And as we scroll through, it goes away. So that means that we could have probably added a little bit more buffer. If I go to my Windows Explorer and kind of look for the folder that we rendered to, you can see it actually gave us negative frames in here. And if I click on the negative flames, and if I click on the negative frames, you can see that the fire's a lot hotter in those areas. And as I get down closer to negative 29, you see the flame is starting to go away. So I could have probably added another frame or two. So you can see here, okay, yeah, by frame two, the flame is actually going away. Actually, let me make this a little bit larger so you can see it better. So if I come up to view, there we go, extra large. So you can see there, frame zero, frame zero one, the flame has gone away. But if I look at the negative ones here, the flame is actually in full effect. So it took a couple of frames for it to go away. So if I would have gave it a buffer of like 45, by the time we got to like frame zero, it would have been completely gone and our sequence would have been flushed out. So if I come back in the After Effects and do a RAM preview, there we go. It plays as it should. And so there we go. Around two seconds in, we have our flame activated and we're good to go. We don't have to worry about like rendering it out twice and, you know, blending it in. So hopefully this helps you guys out just like as a quick reference to show you guys how you can control your particle system in the sequencer when you're working at Unreal Engine. I'm still working hard on the MoGraph course. It's coming soon, but in between recordings, I just wanted to kind of put this together for you guys. I was working on a client project this week and I was actually using this same exact flame package. I couldn't figure out how to activate it within the sequencer. But once I did, I was like, I should put together a video in case other people are having a problem with this. So if this did help you, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.